Welcome to day one of the 2023, the Centenary Manx Grand Prix. This is our first roundup show. If you think back and you've seen the coverage from last year, you'll remember me wishing and hoping that not only that you guys would join us here, but I'd be back to present these shows. Nobody is as happy as me to find myself stood up on the Glen Crutchery Road just minutes before these newcomers that I can see lining up there behind Johnny Barton go out for their, uh, their newcomers speed control lap. Lots of nervous faces, lots of brand new leathers. There's absolutely loads going on. We're shooting this first piece before a single wheel has turned today. So by the end of this roundup show, we'll know how we're getting on. Just remind you and cast your minds back so this time last year, we finished day one with two 120 mile an hour laps. In the it's a bit windy. The weather conditions are definitely different compared to last year. We got 30 seconds to go. I'm going to close this and get out of the way. So, before we wrap up day one of this Centenary Manx Grand Prix, I'm going to roll things back a little bit. 100 years, in fact. Uh, to be honest, more than 100 years. Let's go for 1921 over in Belgium. They've just finished a circuit called Spa, and they're doing their very best to market as well as they can and attract races to this new circuit. 1922, they managed to convince the ACU to take the TT away from the Isle of Man and over to Belgium. So the plan was, 1922, that would be the last time the TT would run on the Isle of Man. Obviously, when the news of this reached the Isle of Man, everybody here went absolutely nuts. There was a massive argument. Well, they call it a meeting. From what I read, it was more of an argument. But effectively, what they did was cleared the air and, and agreed to host the TT here in 1923. What they also realized was they might need another race just in case the TT did actually leave the island. And that, my friends, is where the Manx Grand Prix was born. So the Manx Motorcycle Club worked with the ACU and defined that you had to have two things to race at the Manx Grand Prix back then. One was insurance. Back in the day, it was a thousand pounds. In equivalent today's money, that's about 77 thousand pounds worth of insurance and the second was you had to be defined as an amateur that meant providing receipts upon request for every single part on your bike all of your kit all of your clothing and some of the research that i did i found out that some people had to prove that they would bought their own shoelaces to come and race here as crazy as that was the race came together and on september the 20th 
29 500cc riders and five 350 riders lined up on this very road for the very first Manx Grand Prix. Fast forward 100 years and you get the massive assault on your senses that I've had today. I can remember coming from my first Manx Grand Prix last year and just being completely bowled over after that first day at just how much there is to take in. So in terms of regulation changes and tweaks, not that many compared to last year, apart from the lightweight class, where you were only allowed to run a 252 stroke last year. This year, if you're running a single cylinder bike over 401 cc, you can come on in, much like Sean Anderson did on the Kramer. And also there's a few old school 400 super sport machines as well. So it's, they've kind of opened the doors to allow more people to come and compete in that lightweight class. So alongside those 252 strokes and the big singles, we've also got the prototype machines like a Moto3 spec bike and then the old school 400 super sport bikes, ZXR 400s, Honda RC30s. There's loads in that lightweight class and it promises to be an absolute cracker. So if you're looking for justification for adding those extra bikes in the lightweight class, you've only got to look at one and two in the lightweight. So Ian Locker in his 40th year competing here at the Manx Grand Prix, topped the sheets with a 112 mile an hour lap. And in second place on that Kramer big single was Sean Anderson. So again, immediately you're combining different bikes that on paper shouldn't necessarily be particularly competitive. But when it comes to it around this place, they're within seconds of each other after a lap. In the junior class, it was Andrea Maiola who topped the sheets with a 113 mile an hour lap. In second place, and hotly tipped by every single cameraman that I can see behind you guys right now, is Mark Colvin. We spoke to him up there last year after he had an amazing 2022 Manx Grand Prix. He's back this year on a much better bike. It's the RC Express Super Twin that Josh Brooks stuck on that podium over there in the TT this year. He's had a really good day as Mark. I can tell because he wanted to talk to me last year it was like uh, pulling blood out of a stone, trying to get any words out of him. This year he was all smiles before he even got on the bike. I think he knows he's onto a good thing. And that 112 mile an hour lap that he's stuck in today is a sure sign that going off with the number one plate is gonna be good for him this year. Jamie Williams, Chris Cook and Victor Lopez took the top three spots in the senior class, just about three quarters of a mile an hour separated first from third. 117 for Jamie, 116 for Victor. Classic Superbike next, my personal favorite. If you remember, at the top of this show, I mentioned that we had 220 mile an hour laps after the first day in this class last year. Today there were six. Michael Dunlop led the way with 123 on that Team Classic Suzuki SRAD 750. And then Dean Harrison snuck in on the relatively unknown around here, Ducati 916. I'll find out as the week goes on whether that's a 955 or anything else, but it certainly seemed to be running well. Something Michael and Dean both suffered from was a soft front end. I saw Michael doing what he does best. As soon as he got off the bike, he wouldn't just tell the team what to do, he had to do it with them. He was pulling fork springs out while they pulled the carbs apart and worked on the airbox. He got stuck in. That bike will get quicker as the week goes on, absolutely no doubt about it. Same goes for Dean. Like I say, a relatively unknown bike here at the Manx. But he did know that he needed some fork springs that don't exist on this island yet. They'll be here in the morning, so we can expect more from that beautiful looking 916. Separating Michael and Dean was Davo Johnson, a previous winner in the classic superbike class. He was on the Alistair Cowan Racing ZXR 750 again, but in a really good showing. He looked pretty tired after I saw him after the lap that he put in, but it was 122 miles an hour, good enough for second fastest on the day. Also in that class, and what I'm really looking forward to seeing coming together, you can take your pick really, Nathan Harrison on the RC45, Sean Anderson kind of stepping in and deputizing for Richard Wilson on the Norton, uh, and then Mike Brown on a YZF 750 Yamaha as well. There's also a stunning, absolutely beautiful Bimota YB4 that the Italian guys have got running. We'll cover that in depth a little bit more later on in the week. It's really easy to talk about the classic senior class. You just need to say John McGuinness and go home. It doesn't really do anyone else justice though. And seeing Dom Herbertson smiling and putting in some strong laps from the out lap was really good. Last year he struggled all week with his classic bike. The Yamaha 500 that he was on today was quick out the gate and he was fastest until John's last lap, which came after a bizarre uh, stoppage. He pulled over at the Craig on his first lap and undid his helmet, something to do with the popper. It just took a minute, just chilled out, got somebody from the crowd to rev his bike, took his new gloves off, fixed his helmet, jumps back on and clearly it did the trick for him. So John finished day one in the classic senior class with 108 mile an hour lap just ahead of Dom Herbertson and just down on his own 109 from the first day last year. I've got to be honest though, the weather doesn't feel as good as it did this time last year. What I'm looking at behind you guys is 
autumnal. It's not quite the late summer evening that we had this time last year. Who knows what the weather's going to do for us for the rest of the week, but I can't wait to see how all of those classes come together. Make sure you're following us across all of our social channels. We are at Manx Grand Prix, and make sure you've already hit subscribe for this show so that you can see the next one this time tomorrow morning. Thanks very much.